Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Get the Grey here, and I'm bringing you the penultimate episode of our Pokemon Hard Gold Winlock, or at least what I plan to be the penultimate episode. Because as you guys know, it's Thursday, and if we do take on all of the Elite Four in today's episode and beat them all, then I'm sure in tomorrow's episode we will be taking on the gym, the champion, sorry, being Lance the Dragon type Master. But if you guys know, we are here in the Indigo Plateau because in the last episode, you guys. We went through Victory Road and we challenged Layback and we we swept him. We actually did sweep him and I'll tell you what, I'll tell you something, I'm pretty happy with the way my team have been so far through this let's play and I'll tell you what, it is, it is the only weblock I've done so far on my channel but it is, it is certainly been one of the better Nuzlocks I've played through. But without any further ado guys, before we get a quick team party update, Make sure you smash the hell out of the like button before we even get started. Make sure you also hit that subscribe button if you're new to Ultra Tech. If you are, welcome to keep up with all the latest Ultra Tech content. And as always, you guys, answer the question of the day. Now, I know that um, in the last episode, I, I didn't answer the question of the day because I hadn't figured it out. But to answer the question of the day, which was, what is your... Why... What Victory Road puzzles do you find the easiest and the hardest and why? But, well, to answer that question, in fact, I'll answer it in the episode because then that gives me something to talk about during battles and what have you. But without further ado, guys, let's get a quick team party update. And, um, if you don't like the team party updates, then go ahead and answer the qu question, this question in the day down below, which is who is your favourite um, member of the Elite Four in all Pokemon games? That's going to be today's question of the day. And as I say, I'll talk about it whenever we. have Whatever I talk about and what have you. But we're going to lead off today's episode with Husky, the Mammal Swine. Husky is level 48. I did train him on all my Pokemon until level 48. Just because I thought it was a decent level to gain... So, like, a Pokemon gain experience to be on par with um, Lance's Ace. Which is, of course, one of his Dragonites being level 50. But um, Husky is adamant with holding his half stand for that nice and powerful Earthquake. Best move in the game. He's got Ice Shards, Strength and Ancient Power. Then we have his partner Scales, who is a jolly, who is a jolly Gyarados, holding the Nevermelt Eyes for that powerful boosted fa Ice Fang. It's got Waterfall, Earthquake, and Dragon Dance. Its moveset has really changed a lot, you guys. Then we have God uh, or Butterfree, who unfortunately died a couple of episodes back, but I kind of revived it just because um, you know it's been a solid, valuable member to the team. I thought it deserved a second chance. You know the way the way it died to a misclick. I thought I felt sorry for myself. But either way, so I brought it back. Um, um, Butterfree, of course, is a god. And god is holding the shot big for that nice and powerful gust. It's got, also got Bug Buzz, Side Beam, and Sleep Powder. Then we have Lifesaver here, the Needle King, who is also level 48, holding the Quick Claw, so hopefully he can outspeed everything on the field. Needle King has Earth Power, Surf, Shadow Ball, and Dragon Pulse. Then we come on to our final pair, you guys. At first. First Pokemon in that pair being Hypnotiser Hypno with an amulet coin, so hopefully we get some more monies. It's got Side Beam Hair, but Drain Punch and Flash. And then lastly, you guys, we have Graceful the Togga to get level 48. He's holding the Super Bells because they'll become more friendly to us and what have you. It's got Extra Sensory, Ancient Power, Yawn, and Encore. So, that's the team party update. Updated, I should say. We have our potions, we have the items we needed, so without further ado, let's go ahead and talk to the guy up here and enter the Indigo Plateau. Once you enter this door, you will be facing one of the Elite Four. They are really tough. You cannot exit once you enter. Are you ready? Be courageous and go for it. Okay. So I'm pretty certain that the first, um, yeah, the first member of this Elite Four is Will, the Psychotype user. I'm pretty sure he leads off with his Zatu. He has two Zatus, a Slowbro, a an ex execute Executor, sorry, and a Jinx. So that's the reason why I'm leading off with Husky is because he can deal with the Zatus with his Ice Shard and pretty much take everything out with an else out with an Earthquake or something. But without further ado, guys, let's go ahead and talk to the first member of the Elite Four, which of course is Will. Welcome to the Pokemon League. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Will. I've trained all around the world, making my psychic type Pokemon wonderf powerful. Not wonderful. Sorry about that, you guys. It wouldn't be one of my episodes if I didn't get interrupted at least once by my parents. So I have a nice bottle of Coca-Cola down here, so I'm sure I'll be um, drinking some of that later tonight. But where were we, Will? And at last, I've been accepted into the Elite Four. I can only keep get get getting better. Losing is not an option. 
But okay guys, so we do have our first battle here with Will. And I am really hyped to do this battle. I've been so excited ever since we got past Victory Road. And none of our members did actually die. So, question is, will anyone die in this episode? And if you guys don't know, um, battle animations are turned off. Just because I plainly forgot to turn them on. But, what I was originally going to say is that we will be taking on all four members of the Elite Four in today's episode. Just because when I said a couple of episodes back... That we might be taking on, on separately in each episode. I obviously hadn't realised that, um, you know, there was a, um, there was so much we had to do. Like, capture Ho-Oh, go through, um, Victory Road, Battle Layback. And then, th at that point in time, it was Thursdays. well, today's Thursday. Well, no, today's actually Wednesday. Because as you guys know, I always record the night before... But to, um, when you're watching this, today is Thursday, and I want to um, round off this series, at least um, so it's like well-rounded and stuff. So I end the series on a Friday, which it, I think is kind of well-rounded. So, yeah. So we're going to be taking on all members of the Elite Four in today's episode. Hopefully we shan't lose anyone. Listen to me, shan't. I don't even think that's a word. But um, Will is actually going to send in a slow bolt. Slow bro, sorry guys. I'm going to stay in and I'm going to go for an earthquake just because I feel like one earthquake should be able to take out a slow bro. It's a slow bro, not a slow king, so it is physically defensive. Does go for the water pulse. Now this is going to hurt. But we do live on 17 hit points, you guys. And we may as well go for a, an earthquake just because... Actually, no, because that jinx may come in and we want to be sure that we're going to be a prime position for that jinx because... I'm pretty certain that um, Jinx does have a lovely kiss, which will put me to sleep. And I do want to one-shot that thing, so... I don't know. It, it all depends on um, all depends on what Pokemon Will brings out. That's a critical hit. And it puts us in the same position which we were in last time. Unfortunately for us, so we didn't get the special defense drop. Otherwise, the next Psychic in my hit is with might kill. And to be honest, I really don't want that. I am going to use Hyper Potions unless I am... Um, I have like a status infliction or I'm confused or something. So I'm just going to use Hyper Potions, um, I mean, full restores in battle if I have to. And then outside I'm going to use, um, what's it, Hyper Potions. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to hit this thing with another earthquake just because I feel like any other move I have won't kill it. I mean, Strength might have killed it, but I just want to make sure. And we do have Elixirs and Aethers on, in our bag, you guys. So we can very, very easily just use one of them. So I'm just going to keep on going for Earthquake just because it keeps on putting in the work. And down goes the Jinx. I honestly think that was the biggest threat that um, was that appeared in front of me. Just because it can put me to sleep. And we've all seen the power of God, you guys. We all know how much, um, how annoying um, sleep inflictions are. Especially when you're the pe person who's being put asleep. You all, you all know how annoying that can be. But he, but Executor here is actually going to set up the Reflex, so he might live this Ice Shard. Oh, he does live on one hit point, which is unfortunate for me, you guys, but ho hopefully Husky can take this hit. He does, and I'm actually going to go and heal myself while I think Executor is also going to heal up, because while the Reflex is up, this turn is going to be pretty much useless, meaning that... Um, this reflect. Oh no, he goes for a psychic. I thought I, I thought he would have actually healed, but there's a special defense drop, you guys. I was actually gonna be. I was actually worried about that. So you know we can't really do nothing else against it. But because of that special defense drop and because his ace being a Zatu as well is coming in, I'm actually gonna swap out and go out into scales, just because you know if this thing does hit me with a critical hit, um. Psychic, it's gonna hurt a lot. So I'm gonna swap out. I've swapped out into scales, and hopefully we do outspeed and get a um, waterfall off. At least I hope so. I don't know what's gonna do more. I feel like a waterfall will do more than Ice Fang because it's 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 like all damage calculations and what have you. You know, stab and um, super effective and what have you. But unfortunately, that didn't do as much as I wanted to. However, that's because the reflect was up. And Scales is going to hurt herself in confusion. That's going to be bad. And you go for the Psychic. Hopefully Scales can take it. Oh, we can took that really well, actually. Okay, so hopefully Scales can does come through from the confusion. And down goes the Zatu. Down goes the Zatu. So, um, I'm actually going to turn battle animations on after this battle, you guys. 
I, I can't believe it. I won. I did win. So that was only the first battle, you guys. Even though I was defeated, I won't change my course. I will continue battling until I stand all above trainers. I'll move on and experience the true ferocity of the Elite Four. Okay, but before we do that... On. Confirm. Thank you very much. I always forget to do that after grinding, you guys. I do apologise. And I do apologise I haven't seen an on-screen grinding montage as well. Just because I did some grinding last night. Um... And it took me a very, very long time, because obviously most of my team were around level, um, pretty sure they were around mid-40s, mid so it was like around 3-4 levels for each Pokemon, so it took a long time, and you know, sitting, sitting in front of a camera or DS screen for 4 hours, you guys, especially when you've got a camera right in front of you and you kind of have to reach around the camera, it's a bit hard. So, without further ado, you guys, we're fully healed up, so let's go ahead and take on the second member of the Elite Four, Koga. Wahaha! <laughs> I am Koga of the Elite Four. I live in the shadows. A ninja. My intricate style will confound and destroy you. Confusion, sleep, poison. Prepare to be the victim of my sinister techniques. Wahaha! <laughs> Pokemon are not merely about brute force. You shall see soon enough. Oh, snap! So Koga is literally going to appear from the shadows here, as you'll still see. Bop! There he is. There's Koga. So Koga is going to send out an Ariados, and I feel like I should have used a an elixir on Earthquake, but we don't need to, just because Earthquake has got um, 7 PB still left in it. Now you can see the powerful animation that is Earthquake, you guys. And once again, I do apologise for um, battle animations not being turned on. But as I say, that was 100% 100 particularly my fault, you guys, I do apologise. So, um, yeah, to answer the questions of the day, um, first of all, I'll answer yesterday's Victory Road um, question of the day. For me, um, Kalos has to be my easiest Victory Road, just because it was, um, you know, you had all the torches there representing like the correct way to go and what have you. So that was the reason why for me it was easy at least. Otherwise, um, other people I know in the world may f have found they like to be misleading. I don't know, but you know I'm pretty sure that some other people out there will say that um, black and white victory was the easiest, or platinum's victory road was the easiest, or even emeralds. I don't know, um, but for me the hardest one I reckon is um, I reckon it's got to be. Black and white two, black two and white two's victory load, just because you know you've got all these places that are going left, right, and centre, and what have you. And when I, when you guys obviously won't know this, but um, I after I did the black dialogue um, on my channel a couple of um, weeks ago, I, I think I think I actually finished it like a couple of weeks. Ago. I think it was like a month ago or something. I'm not sure. But I did finish that off in, in style, and we did win that log, spoilers alert if you haven't watched it, but we did win that log, and after doing that, yeah, I actually did a um, off-screen black and white, black 2 and white 2 playthrough, just because, um, you know, I wanted to get familiar with the game, because I haven't played it in a while, and that's what I actually did with Pokemon Black as well. So I did that, and I went through Victory Road, and I actually found it a pain to go through, just because, just because, you know, you got all these winding paths in which you can go and what have you so I found it an absolute pain to go through and you know it's just me guys you know as I say I have my own opinion on what victory road is a hot on what victory roads are the hardest and to be honest they're just some of them are just a pain I mean I get the fact that it's a challenge that um, you are supposed to you know find your own path because it is a difficult challenge and it, they are full of the best trainers. I mean, the Johto Victory Road didn't have any trainers before. You know, they just had all the trainers that were back there on um, Route 26 to train up against. Literally, no one else was there. It's just, it's just me, those trainers, and Layback. So um, yeah, that's your uh, that's your answer to yesterday's question of the day. And today's question of the day: Who is your favorite Elite Four member overall? I have to say, 100%. I feel it's got to be Bruno, just because Bruno does appear in um, both um, Fire Red and Leaf Green's um, Elite Four, you know, like, he was in the original Red, Blue and Yellow, I think it was as well, 
and then he appeared in, appeared in gold and silver, you know, with his fighting type team and what have you. And honestly, I just love Bruno's fighting type team so much. I mean, even though in this, he's actually coming up next, actually, after Koga. But even after this, um, he, um, what was I saying? He does have a team where it's not full of fighting types. You know, I think in this game, he does have an Onyx. But, um... You know, I'm not too sure about that, you guys, because I have looked at their, t I have looked at their teams. I actually do think he has an Onyx, but I haven't looked at their move set. So I didn't know that this Crobat was gonna hit me with a Wing Attack. But um, yeah, you guys. So to answer my and another reason why Bruno is my favorite um, Elite Four member, he just looks so intimidating. You know, he's got his shirt off. He's he's flexing. He's flexing his abs. Is what he's doing. He's a proper fight inside trainer, you know what I mean? He's flexing and everything. Okay, so we actually defeated Koga. Ah, you have proven your worth. So, there we go. Koga goes down. And next up is my favourite Elite Four member. I subjected you to everything I could muster, but my efforts failed. I must own my skills. Go on to the next room and put your abilities to the test. So, like I say, you guys, we are going to heal up. Um, I actually do have some spare lemonades that I didn't actually go put to use in um, before, so that's the reason why I might as well, you know, use them now because it does preserve our hyper potions and full restores after after we beat the champion and what have you. Because if you guys don't know, and I don't know why you shouldn't know this by the time you know that you're watching this um, episode, but after we've done our um, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire playthrough, you know, the remakes of Ruby and Sapphire, that's when we'll go ahead and carry on with this um, wedlock because we are going to carry on the game after we've beaten the champion just because we can go into Kanto and defeat all their gym, gym leaders as well and we can take on the same Elite Four as you can see right now. But obviously after that we can take on Red. So we're, but let's talk about today, you guys. And to, right here, right now, we are challenging the third member of the Elite Four, being Koga. I mean, not Koga, Bruno. My, f How can I forget Bruno? Oh, I don't know. I am Bruno of the Elite Four. I always train to the extreme because I believe in our potential. That's just how we become strong. Can you withstand our power? Hmm, I see no fear in you. You look determined. Perfect for battle. Ready, Gibbs? You'll bow down to our overwhelming power. Hoo-ha! Hoo-ha! I love that. Uh, I literally can imagine just Bruno just clapping his hands like that and then with moving his right arm so like his is like 90 degrees to where your um, to where your actual arm, like the top of your arm is near your shoulder and then I can just imagine like his left arm being slightly raised but like straight and it, the pose I have, the pose I'm actually doing right now you guys just looks so amazing. But yeah, I can actually imagine him doing that and for him like to to um for his sprite to be turned back to you, as you guys just saw then, is powerful. You know, he just raises his left arm. Yeah, he raises his left arm, and it just it, it just looks so powerful, you guys. I love it so much. But the, I'm not going to go for Stab Bug Buzz, because I realised when I was doing my Black 2 um, playthrough off screen, that actually, but fighting does resist Bug. So I'm never going to do that again, I'm pretty certain. But okay, so the reason why I've used God and Lifesaver in this particular pet in this particular battle is because um you know we have God here who can easily put the Pokemon to sleep and go for Psybeam, which is super effective. And then um we have um Lifesaver who of course resists fighting because he is poisoned. You know, it's one of those obscure type matchups you guys that you never actually realise until you actually perform that action. You know, I didn't know that um, Poison Resist fighting, I didn't know that Bug was um, would be super effective on Dark and Psychic. You don't normally remember, you don't normally, like, um, remember all of the type matchups until you put them into action. So, you, you know, you have to play through Pokemon in order to, um, like, experience, like, all of, to become a Pokemon Master, basically. I mean, I'm pretty sure that you can't, you know, unless you, unless you do that, unless you do that, I'm pretty sure that you can't, you know, just watch everyone else play it and then you would be thrown, like, a, po a copy of Pokemon X and Y and you remember all the type matchups like that. I can't do that. So I'm pretty certain that I'd, I'd have to play it anyway in order to, um, you know, be the best that I can. I want to be the very best. But yeah. So the Hitmonchan's going to go for an Ice Punch. I'm pretty certain in this generation you don't have Iron Fist. So... 
that isn't going to be boosted by that, and plus, it, I'm pretty sure that if you did have Iron Fist at this point, that would have done a hell of a lot more damage. But okay, so we're actually going to go ahead and keep on Earth powering the um, Hitmonchan, and the Quick Claw did actually pop for us then. I mean, not like it matters, because um, we do we did outspeed it then. But okay, so you're going to send in the Hitmonly, that's absolutely fine by me. Look at Hitmonly, you just... All these Pokemon sprites look so epic. And obviously we haven't seen these Pokemon on our journey, or at least most of them, until the Elite Four. So, all these sprites just look so powerful. But fortunately you miss your Blaze Kick, because I'm taking a risk, you guys, and if it gets a crit, I'm pretty I'm pretty much sure that Lifesaver's dead. But this Earth Power should kill, it does kill, and down goes the Hitman Lee, meaning that he only he has his Ace left. And what is his ace going to be? It's going to be Machamp. Now that is actually a threat. That is actually a threat that I'm not afraid to that I'm actually afraid to battle. It's level 46 as well, but only just two levels above it. Fight as hard as you can until you faint. Oh my bones, I'm flexing right now. Oh. I don't know about you guys, but it was a hard time. It was a hard work at the gym, you know. I'm flexing on my bones and my muscles and my joints. No, but I actually did like a um I did some work on a um like physical like the the basically stuff about the body and you know like we have I think we have I can't remember how many uh was it joints or muscles that we have in our body. But so there's six hundred and sixty around six hundred and sixty of something anyway. I know that we have two hundred and six bones in a um out of body, but I have no idea like how many there's 660 of something, whether that be joints or muscles, I have no idea, I can't remember. But we did get the Spadoof drop on this Machamp, which is actually really good because that means we can go for an, a stab Earth Power, and I'm thinking that should take it down to at least 1 hit, hit, there, 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 1 hit, <laughs> 1 HP, I'm sorry you guys, I am so tired today, just because when I made a cup of tea before I actually started recording this, and I actually, I was so tired, when I got, when I made it a cup of tea from the machine, I, I got the milk and the sugar out, and uh, the milk out of the fridge, the sugar out of the cupboard, and then after I made it, I tried to put the sugar in the fridge, and the milk in the cupboard, and I'm just like, what am I doing? I mean, the, the first time, I put, I tried to put the milk in the cupboard, and I'm, as I, I, I'm pretty sure that was accidental, so then after that, after that, I put the milk in the fridge, but then after that I still had the sugar to put in the cupboard. And then I, or something was just going in my head, Gibbs, put the sugar in the fridge. And I thought, no! No, why would anyone put the sugar, why, why would anyone put sugar in the fridge? Crazy! It's crazy! Well, okay, so I'm pretty sure that if Machan does go for another cross chop, it's going to kill, especially if it gets a crit. Oh, I thought we got the crit then. All I can just see was Machamp's health just going down and down and down and down. But we actually do have only have one Earth Power left in um, Nido King. But to be honest, you guys, I think we're done with God and Lifesaver for the minute. Just because, like, we have Karen of the Elite Four up next, who's Dark type. Why? How could we lose? I mean, obviously, we do have Butterfree for that. But there's a Houndoo on our team. On her team, I should say. And I'm pretty scared of that. Having lost, I have no right to say anything. Go face your next challenge. <laughs> I love that. After that, he just he just gets so angry and he's like, oh, I'm, I'm pointless. Go ahead. Scrub. I'm scrub, I am. Okay, so we're going to waste our last lemonade on um, Lifesaver. And I'm pretty certain that should heal um, Lifesaver up to the max. To the max, to the max, to the max. Okay, and where's our... We have a PP up as well. I may use a PP up on um, Husky's Earthquake, and then I'm actually going to go ahead and use a uh, Max Elixir, just because, um, you know, Earthquake is a really powerful move, and I'm pretty sure Earthquake can take me through all the way through the Elite Four. So without further ado, you guys, let's swap our team back around again to Husky and Scales, which is going to be our active pair. Just before, just so we can go ahead and take on the final member of the Elite for you guys, which of course is Karen, the Dark-type user. 
I am Karen of the Elite Four. Your gifts, how amusing. My name is amusing? Gee, that's nice. I love dark type Pokemon. I'm known for my overpowering tactics. Think you can take them? Just try and to entertain me. Let's go. Bitch, I will fuck you the hell up. I will fuck you. But okay, so we have Karen here, and um, yes, yeah, she's got a pretty nice pose. And unfortunately, she sends out an Umbreon now. We all know how pretty bulky Umbreon is. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm just going to go for an Earthquake. Just put it out there, go for an Earthquake. I mean, I want to use I want to use Ancient Power because I want to get all my stats up for that Houndoom. So if this, if this doesn't kill, I may go for a... Um, yeah, I'm going to go for an Ancient Power now. Just because, hopefully, I should get the stat increase and then Husky should just body everything and Karen does go for the full restore so if we miss it doesn't look it it's, it doesn't matter just because you know I'm pretty sure this wouldn't have killed anyway that did absolutely nothing we would not have killed that Umbreon but okay so let's just go for another ancient power just because um just to equal the damage that I pretty much had left you go for confuse ray fantastic so we are confused and to be honest Let's just go for another ancient power. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. I mean, I'm pretty sure I'm hitting this thing. I mean, I went for a double team, and it, it seems pretty pointless. Um, can we not? Can we not get a stat boost, please? Okay, but that payback did actually do a fair de decent bit of damage, so I'm not going to heal up. I am going to go for a full heal, just because we are confused, and I don't want to hit myself any more times in confusion than I have to. I mean, we obviously can't get the stab boost, so there's no point in just going for that. So we may as well just go for a straight power. And we know your um, moveset now, Umbreon. You have Faint Attack, um, Payback, Double Team, and Confuse Ray. I mean, it it, I'm pretty sure it doesn't matter, because you're dead. At least I'm hoping this will kill you. I mean, we all know how bulky Umbreon is. We all know that it gets used in OU, I think it is. I'm pretty sure it's used in OU and Smog on um, Competitive Battling. I'm fairly certain it's all you. But you're actually going to send in the Houndoom right away. Level 47. I'm hoping I do our speed. Okay, I do. And this this should kill. I'm hoping it, I'm hoping it kills. Oh, but that health is going down so slowly. Okay, it kills. Whew. That That is what I was worried about. That was Cowan's age right there. And it's just so scary. Vile Plume, we can go for a couple of Ice Shards on you. Literally nothing we have to worry about with Vile Plume. Unless, of course, it decides to put me to sleep or paralyzes me or goes for a Giga Drain. I'm pretty certain I've got nothing to be worried about. I mean, it is a Vile Plume, and Grass types aren't normally the most offensive po a Pokemon. You know, they're seen as defensive Pokemon or what have you. But you're actually going to go for Petal Dance. That may kill. That kills. Husky goes down. Great. Thank you, Husky. Thanks, Vile Plume. So let's go ahead and go into scales. I always get so down whenever I lose a Pokemon. I mean, I'm pretty sure anyone would, to be honest, if they lost a Pokemon, but let's just go for Ice Fang. This should kill. Indeed it does. Husky was one of my greatest Pokemon as well. But okay guys, I did mention this in the episode where God did die. Um, we we won't have any more second chances with our Pokemon. Just because Butterfree died, did die to a misclick when I was supposed to heal. And if it served a purpose. Husky hasn't obviously been on the team as long. And that was entirely my fault. I did decide that, you know what? I thought I thought we would live that. Obviously, we didn't. So it was 100% my fault. So Husky, unfortunately, is not going to be revived. But you have a Gengar, and that actually is terrifying. Look at you, Gengar. So terrifying. Okay, so let's set up with Dragon Dance. Just be. Oh, you have Spite. That's actually going to reduce my Ice Fang. Ooh. See that? It, see, to most people, that wouldn't normally mean anything, but. We have Lance coming up, who's a Dragon-type trainer, and we need all of our Ice Fangs at the minute. 
just because you know he has Pokemon like Dragon. Well, he has three Dragonites, so that's a quite effective Ice Fang right there. But you're just gonna keep on fighting, and to be honest, that's fine. Just because I am gonna restore the PP of all my moves when we after we defeat you. So we're gonna go ahead for this waterfall, and to be honest, this should kill. Just because Gengar doesn't have the greatest defense in special defense. I mean, this is a physical move, but it should kill, especially from a Gyarados. And there we go. So we only did lose one Pokemon in that Elite Four battle, you guys, which I was really happy with. Well, aren't you good? I like that in a trainer. I mean, I'm happy with that. I'm actually glad that we got through another se got through another set of Elite Four members. Oh my God, Pokemon X and Pokemon Y. What a type lock. Strong Pokemon, weak Pokemon. This is only the selfish perception of people. Truly skilled trainers should try to win with the Pokemon they love best. I like your style. You understand what's important. Go on. The champion is waiting. Okay, guys. So, you heard Mighty Karen over here. The champion is waiting. And, unfortunately, guys, we do... Oh, I thought I thought um, we took damage with Gyarados then, but I guess not. Okay, so, the champion is waiting for us. So I'm going to go ahead and save the, ga save the game here and end off this episode here, you guys. Just because in tomorrow's episode, Friday's episode, we'll be going ahead and taking on the champion, of course, being Lance. So if you guys have enjoyed this episode of Pokemon Hard God Wedlock, make sure you smash the hell out of the like button if you haven't already at the start of this episode. Make sure you also subscribe if you are new to Ultra Tech. And as always, you guys, answer um, today's common question of the day, which is who is your favourite at least four member overall but i want to thank you guys so much for watching you guys are amazing i've been giving great this is me signing off